a significant upturn in tuition and other fees has been announced by several educational institutions, uh, a consequence of the removal of the petrol subsidy. This development is causing a financial strain for parents as they prepare for the forthcoming academic session. The federal government, through the Ministry of Education, announced a substantial review of school fees for new students in its secondary schools known as Federal Unity Colleges. The fees have risen from 19,000 Naira to 100,000 Naira a change that will affect all aspects and activities of the schools, including tuition, boarding, uniforms, textbooks, and more. The University of Lagos also joined the trend of fee hikes for undergraduates. Previously, students paid 19,000 Naira for tuition. However, the management has now set 190,215 Naira for students studying medicine and 140,250 Naira for courses that require laboratories and studios. The university management has allowed for payment in installments with a condition that the total fee is paid up uh, one month before final exams. Private school owners in the country have declared that the effect of the recent fuel subsidy removal by the federal government on their cost of operation may push them to also increase their school fees. These are the talking points uh, that we're going to be looking at this morning. And of course, to have this conversation with us this uh, today is Mr. Matthew Oluku. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. A hike in school fees. Uh, let us look at the surge. Uh, a lot of you wouldn't blame the schools though uh that is from my own perspective i mean we all buy from the same market right but we want to look at the effect this is going to have in our you know on the education sector that we already know it was already dwindling it was already shaky uh before now and you know a hike in school fees is going to put a lot, a lot of pressure on parents and of course the students as well because most of them might not be able to afford to go to school now and you know these kind of ripple effects that is having on the educational system however we want to know how you react to this sudden surge and hike in prices of school fees um thank you for having me once more i think there is need for government to give priority to education in that regard i think because if you look at the subsidy removal of um gasoline it have multiplied effect on every strata of Nigerian economy. So I think the educational sector is having its own fair share of the challenges that comes with it. But I think what the government needs to do is urgently look at how they prioritize all the intervention they hope to come up with. Mm. Particularly in the area of um, transportation. We have looked at it across board, both parents and the schools are complaining about operational costs and a good number of the, uh, the operational costs they are complaining about how to do with op, um, transportation but again i think if you look at the government's uh, intention one of the areas of uh, intervention that has to do with um converting vehicles to run on cng because the last economic um uh, the like, last economic council of federal government reached um, a resolution that they should convert some of the vehicles used in Nigeria to run on CNG. So I think the government should critically look at how they can help the school sector in that regard. Because if you look at it, you are, look, you are talking about human capital development that you even, you even need to mm -hmm. drive all the government policies and all the government um, programs that will even boost our GDP. So if education is have suffering in this manner, I think it's going to impact negatively on our economy at the long run. Mm. All right. Uh, during uh, one of the speeches the president gave, you know, he mentioned that subsidy removal, the excesses from the subsidy removal will be reinvested into key, um, key um, areas of the economy and education happens to be one of them it's been three months 
since that you know um, speech was made and we've not seen any of these things you know put into uh, you know into act we've not seen any actions or or pressure or whatever directed in that area uh, and now it, it's taking a toll first of all it started with uh, commercial vehicle drivers hiking their prices these days it's not uh, news it's not new it's not new sites to see Lagosians and people from other parts of the country trekking instead of taking public transport and now it's trickling down to education do you do you think that that is even enough I mean seeing that the education system was already you know struggling to keep doing its business and now there is a fresh brand new uh, weight put on that sector do you see whatever the government had planned to put into education from the removal of subsidy working is that enough is it even enough to start with um for me the government got it wrong from the beginning hmm. well what would have expected that before you started the issue of the policy you would have put your plan you have put all the plans in place on how to cushion the effect because ab initio as a government you know that definitely the removal of subsidy on gasoline will, call, will come with this challenge mm. and the condition is very clear about the wealth of nigerians and their security that they shall be the primary purpose of governance but for all i've seen it appears as if the government is playing, placing priority on revenue drive over and above the wealth of Nigerians. Looking at their uh, proposed uh, intervention, whether it's sufficient to address the challenges, I don't think so. Because as we speak, the only known intervention of federal government is 8,000 to vulnerable, the poorest of the poor. Mm. Though they say they want to review it, we don't know what the review will be. And the other thing we know of the government is the 70 billion approved for National Assembly. Whether they say it's for the working condition of new members or palliative, I don't know the name they, they give it. But for me, I, we have been saying that that money should be withdrawn and put to proper use. Because for me, it's a, a reckless way of sp spending a uh, public fund. And if you look at, for me, the areas we needed government to give priority attention is one, providing alternative means of transportation. Converting vehicles to run on CNG, though the government through the Economic Council have said they want to do that, but I don't know to the extent they have the the uh, capacity, not even capacity, they have the sincerity to do it. Don't forget that under the last administration of Muhammad Buhari, the government through the Minister of Petroleum Resources came up with the idea, but they didn't implement it until they left office. And this government suddenly removed subsidy even mr president did that during his inaugural speech and it's not yet clear whether beyond the eight thousand uh, package for the poor the poor, poorest of the poor whether the government have int intention of doing any other thing in terms of wealth of nigerians to solve the problem or the challenges that come with it so for me to answer your question directly i don't think all their areas of uh, planned intervention is sufficient to address the challenges that come with it all right. Now, looking at the fact that um, there's a removal on PMS, Petro, as they call it, and uh, we've seen the ripple effect it has had across various sectors of the economy, which obviously is going to affect education as one of those sectors. And as much as we know, education and, of course, health sectors are sectors that shouldn't be seen as a money spinning venture. But it inevitably is affecting that sector, whether or not we like it. And one of those is the unity schools that we've just talked about. How about the private school? Are they left out? Because obviously, schools are on holiday right now. We do not know what the situation is likely to be like when they resume. So what do you think about it? If the government is sincere, the solution of this challenge is not far-fetched. If you look at across board, particularly the private schools you mentioned, their major challenge is how to convey the students from their respective home to the school and back to the, their respective homes. Yeah. And you see, you, they are not much in number. I mean the private schools. If you capture them in the program of um, converting the vehicles to run on CNG, I think it will be a proper arrangement. Because 
if it takes 200,000 to buy the kit to convert a vehicle, it's something you can do a simple arithmetic and not the amount of number, sorry, the, the, yes, the amount that I required to convert extra number of vehicles. And you can do a statistic and know the number of private schools in Lagos State, for instance, in Abuja, for instance. Because whether we like it or not, the government must find a way to subsidize education. Mm. All right. The government must, just like you said, that education should not be a money spinning venture, the government must realize that education needs funding. So you think that if they do the same thing in terms of replicating what is being done in the Unity schools by converting these vehicles that run on fossil I'm not even fuel, talking about Unity school in the first place. No, I'm coming. I'm coming. Because when you talk about subsidizing the educational sector, the private school is not left out. That was why I asked you. I'm particularly interested in the private schools. Do you run one? I do not, but I'm aware. I've read about so many of the proprietors complaining about the running costs. Mm -hmm. And again, you understand that they need to increase the salary of the teachers. So it will fall back on the parents who pay the school fees. So, invariably, they will jack up the fees of the, uh, of, of the school fees.